Hello, hello, it's Zoe Catherine here, and for this evening's podcast, I wanted to just talk freely, which is pretty much what I always do. Um, I guess I'm kind of deceptive when I call these podcasts because um, I think podcasts are supposed to be like live. It's unplanned, it's unscripted, it's just me talking without a plan. But um, I definitely do edit it and cut out the umming and the ahhing and the the bits where I'm saying irrelevant things. So. There's no visuals, only audio, so I class that as a podcast. Yeah, so, <laughs> so this evening I wanted to I wanted to talk about how I would change the world if I could. I just think of all these different adv- ideas all the time and I'm just like, why does no one do this? Why is this not a thing? And... Um, I don't really get much, um, I don't really get many responses or anything to anything that I do on here, but um, that could be partly my fault as well because I have the comment section on this for me to approve all the comments and then I don't log in often enough to actually check if there's any comments and they expire after so many days. So for all I know, I could have had more than I realised and just not checked them, but um, kind of... I'm not really willing to put put it on where any comment can go on here. But, um, yeah, e- even though I don't get a lot of um, responses to these podcasts or any of the videos, really, I don't really get much. I've forgotten what the word for it is. The word that everyone uses, you know what I mean? When people respond to things, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, I don't really get much of that, but if anyone ever did it would be cool to have like a debate and share ideas um and you know maybe in 50 years time (laughs) someone will be interested maybe who knows i don't know if this is just me or or if this is like a common thing that lots of people have but i experience this sort of anxiety where i I worry about like the future and I worry about things that I have absolutely no control over like the economy and um, the, fu- the how culture will be in the future you know I, I worry about all sorts from like you know the environment and um, the sustainability of the economy and the, the economic model and can and you know the constant need for growth when growth kind of isn't possible to just keep going and going and going without you depleting all the resources and but then what's the alternative to that people need jobs people need a way to make money um without jobs without money um people starve and riot and turn to crime um so you know i've just i've just been thinking about all these different things that i have zero power over (laughs) And um, coming up with like ideas that mean people can still have jobs, but coming up with solutions to some of the problems that having jobs kind of causes in terms of the environment. I think like a lot of a lot of um, right wing commentators recently have just kind of gone completely in denial about about climate change. I think a lot of them, because it's not a nice thing to think about and it can seem quite negative and scaremongery and I guess a lot of it's kind of like unpredictable and I think there's a lot of fear in the unpredictability of how things could turn out. You know, it can be very costly, it can damage your economy to make rapid changes, it can result in job losses, it can result in damage to entire countries that like that rely on certain certain things such as oil for example um so i i completely understand why it's it's why you'd want to like not believe that climate change is real i completely understand why you would want to believe that but um i think i'm gonna trust the scientists and the fact that we keep consistently having bizarre weather patterns and like heat waves that are hotter than ever before and I I don't know (laughs) I mean it kind of speaks for itself really and of course the scientists are not going to get everything right of course sometimes there can be doomsday predictions and then 
something evolves and adapts or something else happens and it turns out it's okay after all. I mean, you know, nobody can know everything, right? But I don't know. I, I think I'm, I I'm going to believe the people that have been studying this over the people that haven't been studying it and have vested interest in capitalism and their businesses, etc. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um... But I think we're in a we're in a place where often um, people see everything as us versus them all the time and they're very polarized and I I find it kind of frustrating because just because like some of us left wing people or whatever care about climate change doesn't mean like it doesn't mean we're out here trying to destroy people's businesses and ruin people's lives. It's the opposite. Like if <laughs> If the planet becomes completely inhabitable, then obviously no one's going to be able to have a, a successful business anyway. I think it's just that we're thinking long term and they're thinking short term. And I get that you have to think short term as well because obviously short term changes can also affect people. They affect the people that are here right now. So I get that completely. But I think it's trying to find a healthy balance. And I've just been thinking about little random ideas that will never happen, which should happen, <laughs> about how we could make the world a better place. Um, so one idea that I had was in relation to fast fashion, because um, I don't really agree with fast fashion. If you watch a few documentaries on it, you'll see how bad it is. And I was thinking what people could do, because they don't want to lose profit from no longer selling as many clothes, Instead of selling so many clothes, they could sell considerably less, but then every store could have like um, a sort of like upholstery section. Um, and basically once your item of clothing is starting to look a bit worn out, it's not looking its best anymore, the colour's fading or something's ripped on it, there's something wrong with it. Um, you take it to that, you pay them for the service um, so it'll probably cost a bit less than what the original garment cost or if it's a more complicated request it might cost more whatever but regardless um, you take it to the shop where you got it from and um, they basically edit the outfit customise it, do whatever they need to do with it and they basically make it brand new again into either either change the style or make it how it was before either way and that way they could make still have jobs for people because people could have jobs, you know, doing this. And at the same time, it would mean there's less waste because you're reusing something instead of just throwing it out. And it would mean that the company could still make money. I think this is a really good idea. And I know, like, I know, like, it would probably involve more skill, possibly. Um... People would probably have to get trained more, but I don't think there's anything wrong with having a more skilled population. I think that's a good thing. We need to bring that back. We need to bring back the passion for creating and making things. And you know, that's what people used to do. I also think if I could make the ideal world, there would be recycling bins everywhere, like in hotels, in, in the streets, just like anywhere, like, I mean, they do also have some like bins where you can recycle plastic balls and stuff in the cen in the centre of where I live, in the city centre, but they don't have it on like normal streets, you know. Another thing that I would change would be um, health and safety laws abroad. Um, for example, like when when a Western company uses like a third world country for cheap labour, and they basically. There was one where I saw it where they were like mining for this rock that's used as like glitter sometimes and they were letting like the local people were having children go in there because they're smaller and sometimes the caves were collapsing on them and killing them and these products are then sold to like western companies to be used even though like they know what's going on. I think some sort of mining thing that goes on with um, something that's used in sim cards in phones as well where children end up you know in dangerous situations as a result of this and again if you're like a multi-billionaire company you can afford to 
get the proper equipment for for the people that work for you. And like I heard some people say, oh, they can't pay them higher wages because it'll disrupt the economy, which fair enough. If you really have to be tired like that, don't pay them higher wages then. But at the very least, make sure that you're paying for expensive equipment that keeps them safe at work. At the very least. At the very least, they should be given human rights so they can take adequate amounts of breaks. There should be no children, no no children doing adult work. There should be proper equipment to mine things with in a way that's safe and won't harm anybody. Um, that is the very least they can do. If they're not willing to spend the money on their employers, the very least they could do is spend money on safety equipment and making sure people have human rights in the workplace. It's just all about saving money when... I don't... <laughs> it's something I'll never understand how the world's richest people are always trying to save the most money. <laughs> And people with the least don't even care about saving money. I swear, like, whenever you, whenever you see people that are on low incomes, um, and I'm not talking about in cases where you literally can't save money because you don't even have any money to save. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about first world countries where you could save even on a low wage and I'm not saying you could get a house or something, but you could save something, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, I've noticed people don't, and I don't know if that's just because it's the feeling that you're going to miss out on all the fun and beauty of life saving this money, and at the end of it, you might still not have that much, and like not enough to do anything that's worth missing out on so much fun in the meantime, if that makes sense. So I don't know if that's why people that have less money spend more of the, the money that they have. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's just the feeling that there's not that much to lose. I, I don't know. But I've noticed that for sure. I've also noticed that people have less money and more likely to give food and spend money on their friends and stuff. Um, and then I've noticed that people with more money that are more wealthy are less likely to spend money on friends. I don't know. It's just something I've seen happen quite a lot. Um, I could be wrong. It's just what I've seen. But yeah, that, that mentality for me... <sighs> I don't know, maybe it must be something where, maybe it's some psychological thing where when you've got more, you feel like more of a target, um, so you feel like you have to protect what you have more, I don't know if it's that, or if it's just this psychological fear of that it, it will all just go, because, or I don't know if it's like a collective kind of thing where, if, where you've, you just start collecting <laughs> and the bigger and the bigger it gets, like the more you don't want to lose it, you want to keep collecting. I, I don't know. I'm not really sure. The more true crime you watch, the more you see natural disasters, well, not natural disasters, unnatural disasters that have happened that have resulted in deaths of thousands of people. In so many cases, they were entirely preventable because somebody was cutting corners to make more money and in the long run it probably ended up costing them even more because once you've resulted in deaths you're gonna get sued right so <laughs> it's just it it doesn't make sense to me it's not very logical at all um yeah when people complain about taxes i am on a low wage on the scale of things in a first world country but <laughs> i don't care that i pay taxes i don't get why I anyone would feel like entitled to not pay taxes. I mean, everybody benefits from them. What? Where would we be without a system in place that protects us from crime and that keeps the sewage works running and keeps, keeps the roads safe and all this, like keeping the population educated, giving us prisons so that criminals aren't surrounding us. Um, literally everything like it covers so many things like obviously in the UK we have the health service as well which fair enough rich people probably go private anyway but still like I mean a lot of people were still trained on the NHS so some of the people that end up being working in private they were still trained by the NHS so it's those taxpayer dollars still technically help. I always find it bizarre when people say stuff like taxation is theft. I mean, don't get me wrong, 
I think people should be taxed fairly. I don't think the poorest people should be taxed more than the richest people. That That's ludicrous, obviously. The more you have, the more okay you're going to be paying more. So, obviously, you should pay more if you've got more. Um, to think that you shouldn't pay them at all is just wild. I mean, <laughs> this is something... The people that genuinely don't believe in taxes, which so many people say to me that they don't believe in taxes. I just want to know, how do you think all these things that we have, that we need, how do you think they're going to be funded if nobody pays taxes? I'm just curious. Because, like, let's be honest, right, with charity. Um, charity is optional, it's a choice, taxes are not. Um, when it comes to charity, who, what things do we choose to put our money towards? Normally it's... Normally it's towards causes we actually care about, right? Probably most of us are not that passionate about a lot of things that our taxes go towards. We're probably not that interested, so we wouldn't even consider giving money to a charity to do with this topic because we don't care. Um, so it's sort of like, if we could just choose where our money goes. <laughs> I mean, there'd be some industries that There'd be some things that would just like get forgotten about completely, but they would be important. And I don't know, I, I think like it shouldn't always be a choice. I'm kind of glad that the choice is taken away from me in a way, even though I get that sometimes our taxes get misused on things we might not agree with. And I get that, I get why people get frustrated when they see their, their money going, well not their money, but taxpayer money, going on something that they don't believe in, like a cause they don't believe in. I get why that makes them angry, I get it completely. But in my opinion, that's why you should just vote in a government who you actually believe in, rather than voting in a government that you don't believe in. <laughs> because at the end of the day, we can't have control over everything. Um, if if we're all making that individual choice ourselves, that means we had the responsibility to make sure that ev that we're putting our money towards the most ethical projects possible and I think that's a lot of responsibility for the average person that's just going about living their life having to like separate all the money and decide what percentage is going on what cause I don't think most people are qualified to make those choices um so yeah I think it's better that somebody else takes that away from us and makes those decisions for us in a way um, you can always still donate to charity as well, but yeah, that's just my opinion. But yeah, and I have very like left-wing opinions on most things, but I'd say I'm a little bit of a old-school lefty rather than this kind of new age woke kind of lefty that I don't really relate to very much. Um, not that I don't agree with some things that are said, obviously. I probably mentioned it before, but I don't understand the defund the police left-wing people. Um, in my personal opinion, we should be putting more funding into the police services. I don't get why it's it's now a left-wing thing to take money away from public services. <laughs> I mean, hasn't it always been traditionally right-wing politics is like believes in privatisation and left-wing politics leans more to public services being funded. Um, I guess like you could say left-wing politics are usually like a combination of the free market and um, government-owned stuff. <laughs> wow. But yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Like it's usually most, most in socialism it's like a combination but obviously there's still some capitalism and stuff obviously. Um, but at the same time, it's like, there's a lot more government control in a way, a lot more public funded things, um, rather than private private funded things. And when these people are advocating for taking money away from public services, away from the police force, they're essentially like pushing like conservative beliefs in a way. Like, I don't really understand it. And I guess maybe what they're trying to say is demilitarise the police. But if that's what you're trying to say, then say that. Say demilitarise the police. Don't say defund the police because fund is to do with money. Like, it's not to do with, like... Yeah, it's just a bit stupid, really. Um, and I don't understand why people are saying that in England, really, because most of our police, like... 
I'm not saying that police haven't done messed up things here. I've seen some documentaries and they have. Um, but <laughs> we're not the same as America, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like our police go around with guns and stuff. They only ever have guns in, like, extreme situations. They don't have guns, like, in the street and stuff. That's not, like, a normal thing here. So, <laughs> I don't know. I think it kind of doesn't really make sense when people say that here. <laughs> Um, in my opinion, if they should put more money into the police services because then they could better debt out people. And also as well, if the police, if joining the police is so stressful that you're severely understaffed, you're underpaid, um, you're not, you're not well liked, you're not well received by a lot of the public. Um, you're going through all this, right? low pay for considering what you're doing, all that kind of stuff. Um, who do you think's going to want to do that? Because I feel like that would attract more psychopaths in a way because psychopaths, they deal well in stressful environments and people that are like, not on the sociopathic scale, the people that feel empathy, they feel anxiety, they feel fear, they feel all those kind of emotions. Um, they're probably going to be less inclined to join a police force where they've got low pay um, and <laughs> just the, everything's been cut corners because there's so little money. Like, I feel like that would be a very stressful environment and they wouldn't last long. So in a way, like taking money away just is going to encourage more psychopaths to join because they're the only people that could handle that kind of environment. Um, also as well, like money can also be used to train people better. Like money go also goes into training, making sure people are more sensitive to different kinds of people. Um, you know, teach them about how people with disabilities can, and people with mental health problems can react differently to what you might expect, um, and to not abuse them, <laughs> um, and you know, to teach them about all these different cases of dis discrimination, how and how to how best to deal with stressful situations. Um, if they had more money to go into training, people could probably handle situations better so that there's less injustices and it would be better to vet people out as well to make sure you are hiring the correct people. Uh, yeah, I definitely think that's possibly one of the dumbest things I've ever heard come out of left-wing people. Um, I'm kind of half-half on like lefties that lefties that um, do wild things to like protest with regards to climate change like when they start damaging old artwork and causing disruption in traffic and stuff and I have to be honest I kind of agree with the right wing people on it just because if you stop traffic right you're making more pollution go into the atmosphere um, because people are going to be in the cars for longer um, I get that they're trying to cause disruption to get noticed and all that, but I feel like it just annoys people and I don't feel like it makes people want to join the cause. I think it just makes people not like them and think they're crazy. Um, and when the same with when they destroy things, it's like... I just don't like destructive behaviour in general. Um, like when that sycamore tree, that really ancient one, um, near Hadrian's Wall got cut down by some teenager. I was quite upset about that. Because to me, like, history, nature, beautiful things that people have put a lot of effort into or things that have just been there a, real long, a really long time and should be preserved, to just destroy that overnight after all those years, for me, is just wild and really depressing. And it speaks to my fear of destruction. Um, I have a kind of obsession with preserving memories. I don't know. I just don't like waste. For me, that's kind of like... That's everything I hate about people that destroy the environment, the fact that they've destroyed something. And so when people that are, you know, being all pro-environmentalist with their, you know, their protests, and then they go and destroy something, costing the taxpayers money to get it repaired again, ruining something that was a p an important piece of history, damaging things, I just, I don't know, I just... To me, it feels like it's like goes against the message that they're trying to preach. And I get people saying, well, how else will they get noticed? Um, and I get it's a tricky one. I do get it. That's why I can see both sides. But 
is it working though? Is it working? It's been, I don't know. I feel like probably more, something I changed was I'd make the message for climate change more positive, which I recently watched an interview with Lily Cole talking about, you know, the different ways that you can make the environment better. Um, and, you know, the positive information, how hope is not all lost. And I think that's such a good message because I think it's so easy to just give up and think, oh, well, everything's going to get destroyed anyway. So why bother washing out my plastic today? I'll just put it in the, the main bin, you know? Why bother, like, turning off the heating? Because, like, give me solutions. Don't just tell me how everything's going wrong and how things are just getting worse. Tell me how things can be better. That's what I want to hear. Um, so yeah, that's another thing to change. I change how negative news is. Not that I'm saying that we shouldn't talk about dark subjects. We should. We should not hide from the truth. I think we should report on bad things that happen in the world and concerns. Absolutely, I do. <coughs> but I think we just need more focus on on solutions, um, possible ways, and show the ways that we've, we've already made progress, the things that have already been invented and possibilities we can take. I don't know why we don't talk more about green energy. I think there's a lot more ways we could engage younger people and older people alike into um, more positive ways of thinking about the future and more positive ways we could plan ahead and um, just a bit tired of doom and gloom especially like in the day and age of, the, of the, you know technology and internet and more and more people working from home and having to spend a lot of time on their own um, and having to use like technology as an alternative way to um, feel connected to the world and um, just constantly being surrounded by um, constantly being surrounded by negative messaging is not I just don't think it's helpful I think it results in people looking elsewhere for for ideas um, and ending up going down conspiracy routes especially just because let's be honest like I'm talking all this stuff on this podcast and there's probably a reason I'm not getting tons of views on these kind of <laughs> debates I'm not, well talks that I'm having and that's probably because it's quite boring to talk about like logical answers and logical solutions and to be nuanced and reasonable it's actually not that entertaining I feel like extreme views and conspiracy theories are a lot more interesting um, I watch them sometimes most of the time I take it with a pinch of salt and I don't take them very seriously but I do find them entertaining and so I completely understand why those things get more engagement um, they make you feel like you're a part of something. They also make things easier if you are having, experiencing a lot of anxiety to just blame all the issues. It's like people that blame, you know, P something failure on like the whole of Hollywood, for example. It's like, yeah, of course there's rich, wealthy people that are in a powerful position to take advantage of people. I mean, same with politics. Any, any kind of rich, powerful person has been put in a position of power where they can take advantage of that. But that doesn't mean that all people in the, in power are doing those things. It just is it's probably something in, unfortunate that's in human nature where there's always a certain percentage of people that want to do disturbing things. But a lot of them, because they don't have a lot of money or power, they get caught for it. Um, they get punished. Or sometimes they don't get caught for it, to be fair. It's not just powerful people that get away with this stuff, to be honest. But, you know, they're less likely to have the power to hide what they're doing in the same way someone that's powerful would. But I don't think that you can't just, like, get rid of the whole of Hollywood or get rid of all rich people or all politicians and then, oh, suddenly this problem's going to disappear. Nope. The problem will always be there. With great pa power comes great responsibility. And the only way to sort of, like guarantee no one can use their power against anybody to take advantage of them would be to make everybody completely equal um, and that's probably not possible so you know I think when people realise when people realise that you can't just blame one type of person and put them all in a box and get rid of that box um, and that that everything is a little bit more complicated and that probably anybody can be tricked and fooled at some point. Anyone can make a wrong decision. Um, sometimes th bad things happen for no reason. As soon as people kind of realise that, I think the world becomes a scarier place. Um, 
So I, do, I understand completely why people go down those routes. But saying touch some grass definitely has relevance. I think pretty much anybody with any fear, um, their fear bec usually, usually typically becomes less when they surround themselves with other people and are not by themselves. I know this has been quite like, quite a political conversation. Um, I've mostly touched on stuff to do with the environment and a little bit within relation to economics, but I probably don't, I'm probably not going to talk about this subject a lot after this, unless I think, unless there's something exceptionally interesting or something new that I thought of. Um, I don't know, just because like, I think I want to go for an era of focusing more on fun, creative subjects and more social issues rather than vague political ideology. Um, not that I'm ever going to stop having my own beliefs, obviously. I'm just in my era of wanting to re-engage myself with more like creative and emotional based thinking. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I want to like seek out pleasure, that's basically what I'm trying to say here. Everything that I said here really is coming from my own personal opinion. Of course, like I have watched documentaries, I have read news articles, I have been given information on various things that that leads me to come to these conclusions. But like anybody else, I really don't know anything. I've not studied any of the topics mentioned here, so it's I don't actually really know anything about anything. I'm just a peasant with some opinions. So yeah, that's it for this video.